What's up guys? In today's video, I'm gonna take you step by step through how I change the strings and set up a guitar with a Nevertune bridge. Let's get into it. All right, so I've had a lot of people ask me from one of my previous videos where I actually unboxed my ESP E2 Eclipse 7 string with the Nevertune bridge. That is a mouthful. But I've had a lot of people ask me a lot of questions regarding how the thing works, what kind of magic or sorcery is going on, and I'd like to try to clarify some of that stuff. It's actually really cool. This is probably the most ingenious guitar innovation that I've seen in many, 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 many years, okay? Uh, the guitar has kind of repeated itself over and over and over again. It's not exactly new technology. It's sort of been the same thing for many years. We've just refined little things about it to make it a bit more modern. But this thing right here is full-blown space age. So let's get into it. The first thing that we're going to talk about is sort of what it does and why it's a thing, okay? So the idea of the Evertune bridge is that it doesn't allow your guitar to go out of tune, hence Evertune. But what you need to understand about that is, is sort of the mechanics. This thing is a machine. On the inside of this guitar, there's spring mechanisms. And these spring mechanisms are actually set up to each and every one of the saddles. Each saddle has its own spring. So as the string pulls the tension this way, there's a spring inside pulling the tension that way. And this way, it sort of floats. So basically, every single saddle on this guitar is its own floating tremolo. That's probably the best way I can explain it to you guys, especially for those that know about floating tremolos. Okay, so each and every saddle is its own floating tremolo. They basically set this thing up with three phase positions. There's phase one, where you're basically tuning the guitar up, which I'll show you in a bit. There's phase two, where the guitar will actually stay one pitch for a very long time as you tune the tuning machine tighter and tighter and tighter to continue to stay with that one pitch. And then it's gonna hit what they call the bend stop, where you'll see the pitch start to go up again. I'll explain all this later. I know it sounds a little crazy, but it makes some sense. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get these old strings off. I'm gonna clean this guitar up because I have barely played it in months. It sort of sat around collecting dust because this is my main touring guitar. I use this with propane and unfortunately, I haven't been able to tour with propane all summer. So this poor guy has been neglected. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get it nice and cleaned up. I'll give it a nice little wipe down and then we'll get it set up to get some new strings on it. Okay, let's do that. I think that it's worth mentioning, this guitar has locking tuners, and I'm gonna do a whole nother video regarding locking tuners and how necessary they are. These things are, you can't like, you, you just have to, you gotta have them. So I'm gonna do a video in the future explaining why these things are awesome, why everybody should have them. I don't even know why we are still messing with regular tuners, but just so you know, locking tuners, it's gonna make this process much faster. So. Keep that in mind. Now that we got this thing cleaned up, it's time to put on the new strings. And here's what we're gonna need in order to do that. First of all, obviously, new strings. I'm using D'Addario 9 gauge 7 string set. I like a little bit of a lighter gauge string. I've always played 9s on my 7 strings and 10s on my 6 strings. I feel like when I jump back and forth between the two, it feels nice and comfortable. So, I rock 9s. I'm also tuning this guitar to regular B standard, typical seven string tuning where it's E to E and then the seventh string is gonna be B. So nothing crazy, no crazy drop tunings. This is in standard tuning 
and, uh, and I'm using regular nines. The next thing that we're gonna need is obviously a tuner because we have to get it set up in tune to begin with and then after that it will stay in tune and we'll show you how that works. So tuner and if need be a cable, right? Regular cable, this is so I can plug the guitar directly into the tuner and get a nice clean signal. You will need a string winder and clip. Now, again, like I mentioned, this guitar has locking tuners, so we won't need to wind too much, but we'll still need a winder. It makes the job much easier. But of course, we need clippers so that we can trim off all that excess. And lastly, what we need is some kind of a multi-tool. Uh, I'm using this Ibanez multi-tool. This thing's awesome. It has basically everything on it from screwdrivers to hex keys to truss rod wrenches, everything. So this thing's really nice. Now, when you buy a guitar with a Nevertune, it does come with an actual hex key that's made for the bridge. It's the 2.5 hex key on this particular multi-tool. Uh, I wanna say that's probably in millimeters, but I'm not really sure, but let's just go with that, millimeters. And that's gonna be the size hex key that you need in order to adjust everything on the bridge. It all basically works with one key, so that's nice and easy. The first thing that we're gonna wanna do here is unpack one of our strings and get some things situated. Now, the beauty of this bridge is that it's set up very similar to that of like a fixed bridge, and I'll show you why right now. Once you've got your strings all unpackaged, we're gonna take that seventh string, and the way that we feed this into the guitar is the same as though this was like a fixed bridge, where the, where the string will go directly through the back of the guitar. You'll notice inside there's holes, right? And inside of those are where you're going to insert the string. So we insert the string into this hole and it's gonna come out right there. Just like a fixed bridge guitar. And then if you notice here, when we pull on this a little bit, you can see that we're activating the springs. So that's essentially what we're doing as we tighten the string. What we'll do now is we'll go ahead and feed the string through the tuning machine, making sure the tuning machine is unlocked enough to fit through. And here's the beauty, again, of locking tuners. It's this fast. Feed the string through, line it up, lock the back. I like to bend it up just so it's a bit out of the way. And then we can take this and tune it up. And that's it. Now that string is done until we stretch it. But basically as far as the installation for that string, seconds. So in this next string, I'm gonna go through a little bit more of what's going on on the Evertune bridge and explain a little bit more about what's happening here. So let's break these two apart. And so again, we're gonna find the hole for the second string, place the string through, and sometimes it takes a little bit of wiggling, but then it'll finally come through like so. And again, bring it up to the tuning machine, making sure that it's unlocked from the back. Again, we'll do another video where I explain those in a little bit more detail. We're gonna lock this, and now I'm gonna show you a little bit about what's happening here. Now that I've inserted the string through the bridge and connected it to the tuning machine, I wanna show you sort of how this whole mechanism works. So at the moment, the string is completely loose. There's no tension. We've just put it through and locked it into the tuning machine. We haven't turned it at all, so now it's totally flat, as you can see. Right? Sounds like some crazy death metal stuff. I don't know. So, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tune it up and I want you to hear what happens. Now 
Now one more time, I'm going to show you what happens, but now from the point of view of the tuning machine. Now, if you noticed, I was able to turn the tuning machine back and forth and it wasn't changing in pitch at all. This is when we've reached phase two. The first phase was the entire process tuning up to that point, but now it's reached a bit of a plateau where it will stay in tune. So you could set your guitar up to stay within this threshold and the guitar would always be in tune. You basically just tune it, which we're gonna do in a moment, and then it won't move because it won't allow the, the note to bend. It doesn't allow the, the note to change in pitch at all. When it's in this position, it doesn't move. And this is where the Evertune comes from. But what we're gonna do in order to actually get a little bit of feeling back into the guitar and not have it be just notes that sound incredibly unnatural, we're gonna tune it right up to the bend stop. We're gonna allow it to go into phase three but then we're gonna bring it down just back into phase two so that when we apply more tension to the string, it hits that bend stop and goes into phase three so that we can actually bend the note. But what happens, no matter how much you bend that note, it's just gonna bring it more into phase two. So say for instance, you didn't stretch your strings correctly. The only thing that's gonna happen, even though you didn't stretch it all the way, the only thing that's gonna happen is it's going to bring the tuning back into phase two more. You're just gonna lose the ability to bend. But if you set up your strings correctly, you're not gonna have that problem. And it's gonna feel very natural and really nice. Let me give you an example. Now that we've got this set up, we'll go ahead and work our way through the rest of phase two. <laughs> See how it started to go up in pitch? We've now reached the bend stop and the pitch is able to go up. So what we wanna do is we tune it up and then bring it down. Just to that point where it's just under the bend stop. Now this allows us to bend the note. Whereas if we had it tuned lower than that, it won't bend at all. Right? And that's basically the idea of the way the entire guitar works. So let's go ahead and put all the strings on and let's get this thing going. And I wanna show you how to set up the tuning and the intonation. Let's get into it. All right. Now that we've got all the strings on the guitar, I wanna show you how to tune each string. Now, obviously, as we noticed while we were putting the strings on, we're not gonna be using the tuning machines to actually tune the guitar. We're only using them to provide tension to the string to pull against the spring that's inside of the guitar. Again, imagine this is like a floating tremolo. So, much like a floating tremolo, how do you adjust the tuning on that? Generally on a floating tremolo, if you know what that is, there's gonna be a small fine tuner on the very back of the, of the bridge on a floating tremolo, which allows you to fine tune each string after you've already locked off the headstock. Now, again, I'll do another video about floating tremolos in the future so that you have a better idea of what I was just talking about, but for now, just understand the idea that we are going to fine tune each of these strings from the saddle themselves. If you'll notice, inside of the saddle themselves, you'll see these small hex key uh, openings. These small hex key openings. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our 2.5 millimeter hex key to adjust the fine tuning of each individual string. So this is how this works. Let's check our tuning on this guy. So we've got B, and B is looking like it's a little bit sharp. So what do we need to do to fix a string that's sharp? Make it flat. And in this case, what we'll do is, we're gonna take the fine tuner, and we're gonna loosen it just slightly. 
Now what you'll need to do is you'll actually have to take the hex key out. This has been my experience. I haven't really been able to leave it in while I'm tuning. So basically what I'll need to do is put the hex key in, tune it to about where I think it might rest and be in tune, and then I'll take out the key and then check the tuning, much like we've done now. And because this guitar is generally always set up with these Diodario 9 gauge 7 string sets, most of the strings are gonna be very close, but not all of them. Every time you change your strings, you do need to do this to the bridge to fine tune all of the strings. You just have to do it. It's, what, it's how the whole thing works. So, what we'll do is tune it to B, check that tuning, great, it's in B. And then moving on to E. In this case, E is a little bit sharp, so what do we need to do? We need to tighten the tension and bring it up. So we're gonna take our hex key and we're gonna turn it to the right to tighten the tension. Let's pull it out and check it. And it's perfect. And you're gonna do this to every single string. Once you have that done, then the guitar is in tune. It's basically set it and forget it. And at that point, you're using the tuning machines to change whether or not you have the ability to change the pitch with your fingers in a bend, or you have it set completely in the phase two area where you're not bending. This is perfect for when you're recording rhythm guitars. Anything that doesn't need a lot of bending. Now, in my particular kind of music, I still like to have the ability to bend, but it's nice that I can set this thing up that when I am chugging along in the rhythms and I don't need the bend, I can keep it so that it stays mostly in the phase two. But then if I have to bend, maybe I need to put just a little bit more effort into it, bring it up against that bend stop so that I'm able to actually change the pitch of the note. This seems to work out very well for me. When I play live though, I bring that note right up to the edge of the bend stop so that I get immediate pitch shifting. So that's basically the setup for the Evertune bridge. Let me explain a few other things. If I wanted to change the intonation where I would be changing the position of the saddle either closer to the headstock or further away from the headstock depending, let's try this now. So we have B and if we want to check the intonation we can play B on the 12th fret. Now on my guitar I have set this up a thousand times so it's going to be pretty well on. Uh, I've never actually needed a lot of adjusting. The only time that I've really needed to adjust the intonation on this guitar is when you switch gauges, when you switch full-blown string gauges. Say you go to a heavier gauge from a 9 to a 10 or a 9 to an 11, or even worse, some people play in 13s and all this crazy nonsense. When you switch to these gauge strings, you need to do a full-blown setup and you need to change the intonation. You also need to adjust the truss rod accordingly because that higher tension is gonna pull against the truss rod and then you'll either get a bow or if you're going backwards, you will get a back bow where the, string, the strings will actually lay against the fretboard itself. So make sure you set that up. But in order to check the intonation, you're basically gonna use these screws on the back in order to do that. This will change the position to and fro. Now, these on the very top, these adjust the height of the action of the string. Again, my guitar is kind of already set up, so I'm not really gonna go through and change any of these things. Just understand that the ones on the top will help you adjust the action and how high the string sets up above the fretboard. The ones on the back will allow you to change the intonation and adjust that, and the ones that are inside of the saddles are the fine tuners. Once you have these few things memorized and you kind of understand the idea of this, this system is really super fast. For touring musicians, especially like myself, when I'm playing with propane, we don't have even time to tune in between songs. We play 22 to 25 songs in an hour and a half, back to back to back to back to back without stopping. So it's necessary for me to not have to worry about my tuning, and this guitar makes that happen. It's perfect. I've never played a show in my life where I was able to just play and not be concerned with worrying about, is my guitar in tune? Oh, I need to check it after every single song. I don't have to do that. It's set and forget. It's allowed me to give such a better live performance 
and I don't know what I would do without it. Like I said, locking tuners and Evertune bridges at this point in 2020 should be standard. That's just my opinion. So now that we've got this set up, let's go ahead and get this thing tuned up and hear how it sounds. Of course, it's gonna be in tune though, duh. So now I've got this thing tuned up. Again, I already had the setup pretty much where it needed to be, so it really didn't take a whole lot. I can do some more specific videos on exactly how to do this. Just let me know in the comments if that's something you wanna see. This was sort of a brief overview to give an idea of basically how simple this really is to understand. It isn't that crazy. Once you have the string through, you've locked it off, you've tuned it up, it's basically gonna just sit in this one spot. In order to intonate it, you just move the bridge back and forth. And what's nice about that is as you move the bridge back and forth, I forgot to mention this, as you move the saddle back and forth while trying to intonate, you don't have to keep retuning the guitar because it's gonna stay where you've set the tuning. So it makes intonation super fast that all you have to do is adjust the back of this saddle to sit at the exact octave and boom, it's done. This literally takes minutes, minutes. Whereas you would sit doing a, a setup on a, on a guitar without an Evertune for an hour trying to, to pull this whole setup together. But let's hear it real quick now that we've got this thing set up. Now I have this set up in the, still in the phase two area. So there is no bending available. So let's, let me show you how that is. Right? So it's nice and in tune. It's super solid. No matter what you play, it's going to sound solid. Pretty awesome. Now, let's go ahead and tune these things up and set it up so that we can have some bending. Because right now... It's weird, there's no bending. It's a very, very strange feeling, but it's kind of cool. Again, if we were in the studio and we were trying to record a song and we wanted solid, in-tune tracks, this is the way to go. And then of course, with this particular guitar, we have the coil tap so we can pop that up. That makes that super chimey. The mixture of those two tones together in the studio is I'm gonna do a video on that too. All right, so let's tune these guys up and set this to right at the edge of phase two and phase three so that we can see how lively we can make this guitar. Let's do that now. Now we've got this guy set up in tune for bends. How cool is that? So it brings all the feeling right back to the guitar. This is how I would play it live. And the more I bend it, the only thing that happens is I lose the ability to bend because it's stretching the string. If we were playing on a guitar that had a normal bridge, you would instantly have a string that goes flat because you've stretched it sharp so much. But on this guitar, it's just gonna fall into that phase two and stay in tune. And the only thing that will happen is we would lose the ability to bend. Now, in this case, it's pretty easy. This guitar is very easy to deal with. So once you've got the strings on and you do a quick general stretch of the strings across the entire fretboard, each of the strings, once you've done that, this thing is pretty well set up and you don't really have much else to worry about as far as the pitch shifting or the string slipping. This is also another advantage to the locking tuners because the string doesn't actually wrap 
around the tuning peg. It just goes through, locks, and turns. And it's only about at maybe a 45 to a little bit more of a degree angle inside of the tuning machine. So it's never actually wrapping. So that also helps with the stretching process. It makes all these things super fast. So if you were ever interested in a guitar with a never tune, especially a seven string, check out the ESP E2 Eclipse seven string with the Evertune bridge. It's pretty much awesome. I don't know where I would be without this thing now. It's a necessity on tour for me. So thanks for watching guys. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, do me a favor, hit that like button and go ahead and tell me how it worked out for you down below. Are you interested in buying a guitar with an Evertune bridge? Are there any other questions that you have that maybe I can clarify? Let me know down below. And until then, I'll see you next time. Peace.